science surrounds us. It lights our homes, fuels our cars, and even helps us get up in the morning. In our day-to-day -day lives, science takes us to work, keeps us warm at night, and even helps us watch television. Where does it all begin? How does it all work? We're all blinded by science. We all have questions, and we all wonder why. Hi, I'm Brian Keating, and today Harriet and I are going to show you a few things about our everyday world. These are everyday things that happen to me and to you and everyone every day. Essentially, it's everyday science. We're going to show you how these things work and why they do what they do. But first, let's join Harriet and find out about something that we use every waking hour of every day. Lights, camera, action. You're able to see me on TV right now because of a very special relationship between your eyes and your brain. If it wasn't for this very special relationship, you couldn't see me on TV right now. Or go watch your favorite movie at the movie theater, or type on your computer at work, or even use electrical lights. You'd still be using candles. Wow, what could this be? What makes this all work? Well, we're off to find out. We're going to visit Dr. Don Klein at his vision lab at the psychology department of the University of Calgary. He's going to tell us all about this special relationship, this thing called persistence of vision and how it's all evolution at work. So doctor, why do we have persistence of vision? Well, the human visual system seems to compromise in the sense that it allows us to see both in day and night. And to have a system that works well in low light or dim illumination, it needs to be able to light up, add up light energy over some time. Uh, and that seems to be the fundamental reason for the persistence of vision in some sense. The slowness of the system is to add light up over time and thus allow us to see effectively in dim illumination. You can handle about 10 images a second. The reason for that is, it takes about a tenth of a second to get one image from your eye, through the optic nerve, and up to your brain. This is how film and TV work. Separate images seem to blend into each other, giving you the illusion of motion. It's your brain seeing a series of still images, adding them up together, and telling you it's all one smooth motion. The counterexample of that, of course, is in the old movies where things were right. very jerky because they didn't have enough frames. So they were below the persistence level of the visual system. As a consequence, people seem to be sort of jerking around, <laughs> jumping around like the Charlie Chaplin movies. Yeah. There are a lot of common examples or everyday examples of persistence in vision. And you can see that, um, for example, when children play with a sparkler or a glow stick or even an adult perhaps waving a cigarette around in a darkened space, you'll see a trace. You can almost write your name out. Uh, associated with the persistence of that trace in the visual system and as a result sort of early parts of the display are added to later ones and you can actually see in some kind of form a circle or a letter or, or whatever the, the kid or adult is drawing. And persistence of vision works the same for lights, incandescent lights to be exact. They're flashing on and off 60 times a second but we don't see it. Your brain is smearing the flashes together to give you smooth comfortable light. If they were flashing at, say, 45 times a second, like a strobe light might do, then we have a problem, and you start to see all the flashes. Strobe lights, because of their variable flash rates, may confuse your visual system, giving some people headaches and others seizures. So now I'm going to show you some examples of persistence of vision in action. Just watch the water falling. Concentrate on the rock in the foreground. Now we're going to stop the falls. Watch what happens. Did you see it? You should have seen the falls start to move backwards. Here, let's try it again. Water falling. And stop. 
Okay, now we're going to use this digital waterfall. You'll be able to see it better this time. Water falling and stop. This is your brain retaining information, accumulating images. This one is probably the most common persistence effect, the backwards wagon wheel. We've all seen this where the wheel appears to be going backwards as the vehicle goes forward. This only happens when the spokes on the wheel are identical in size and they are turning at a specific rate. Once again, this effect is caused by your brain retaining images, accumulating these images and combining the information. And it presents you with the illusion of backwards motion. In essence, I guess one could think about um, persistence and vision as a form of memory. A form of memory that by virtue of fairly slow processing of visual stimuli allows uh, information to be added up over time. One stimulus to the one that comes after it, for example. Uh, in essence, then, this evolutionary mechanism uh, that allows us to add up light over time and see a dim illumination also uh, allows us to uh, see motion in uh, computer screens and mo uh, television and movies. And thus, in some sense, uh, this evolution mechanism was a very helpful one for a variety of other reasons that weren't probably intended by Mother Nature. So next time you're watching a flick, movies were once called flicks because of the flicker. Just remember, all this is a gift from your brain.